Welcome to Main Street Living. This program offers you the opportunity to participate in a worship service led by pastors and congregations of the Lutheran Church Missouri Senate from your surrounding area. On today's program, all that we should be and do in thought and word and deed, Jesus was and did. He lived perfectly in our place and fulfilled all that we should do. Like the Thessalonian Christians, you have received the word of God and you have received the grace of God and you have received the Holy Spirit of God and you have come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing in his name, your sins are forgiven and you have eternal life. The service will begin after this opening hymn. Oh, 
Good morning. I'm Pastor Maynard Tunzing from St. John Lutheran Church in Crete. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us and for his sake. God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord who has begun this good work in us Bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The Old Testament reading is written in Isaiah chapter 45, verses 1 through 7. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have grasped, to subdue nations before him and to loose the belts of kings, to open doors before him that gates may not be closed. I will go before you and level the exalted places. I will break in pieces the doors of bronze and cut through the bars of iron. I will give you the treasures of darkness and the hordes and secret places, that you may know that it is I, the Lord, the God of Israel, who call you by name. For the sake of my servant Jacob and Israel, my chosen, I call you by your name. I name you, though you do not know me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. Besides me, there is no God. I equip you, though you do not know me, that people may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none besides me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. I form light and create darkness. I make well-being and create calamity. I am the Lord who does all these things. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle lesson is written in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 1 through 10. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We give thanks to God always for all of you, constantly mentioning you in our prayers, remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers, loved by God, that he has chosen you, because our gospel came to you not only in word, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit, and with full conviction. You know what kind of men we prove to be among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord, for you received the, the word in much affliction, with joy of the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and in Achaia. For not only has the word of the Lord sounded forth from you in Macedonia and Achaia, but your faith in God has gone forth everywhere, so that we need not say anything. For they themselves report concerning us the kind of reception we had among you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who delivers us from the wrath to come. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel is according to St. Matthew, chapter 22, verses 15 through 22. Then the Pharisees went and plotted how to entangle him in his words. 
And they sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are true and teach the way of God truthfully, and you do not care about anyone's opinion, for you are not swayed by appearances. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why put me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. And Jesus said to them, Whose likeness and inscription is this? They said, Caesar's. Then he said to them, Therefore render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard it, they marveled, and they left him and went away. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for my message today is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 1 through 10. Have you ever found yourself saying or doing one of those things that your parents said or did, and you had vowed never to do the same? And yet there it was. Yes, you're just a chip off the old block. It's happened a few times that someone saw in me something of my dad or my mom. And when it happens, it's usually some particular phrase or manner of saying something. Perhaps it was a particular look or expression on my face that did it. I have found myself noticing that I walk like my father did because we have a similar body structure. It happens to everyone, probably at some point or another. Sometimes it's funny. Sometimes we laugh at ourselves when we see something of our parents in something we say or do. And sometimes we don't like it, and so we disown or deny it. Sometimes it might be a little discomforting. Sometimes it's a good quality, and we're usually okay with that. 
If it is a quality we don't like, well, we may not be happy about that, and we may want to try to change or to intentionally change it. Sometimes it just is. It's there. It's true. There is no denying it. There are some things in which we are copies or molds or types or imitations of our parents. Now, as we get older, then we start to see it in our children. They become copies and imitations of us. We love it when we see our good qualities in them. We cringe when we see our poor qualities reflected in them, but there it is. Children are imitators of their parents at times. Now, imitation doesn't mean that our children are us or that we are our parents. Each person is who they are of themselves. As much as we can be like our parents or our children like us, we are not them, they are not us. They are who they are, we are who we are. I am me, you are you. But part of who we are is stamped into us from our parents. And some of our qualities are stamped into our children. Some good, some maybe not so good. Now, taking this from our text in 1 Thessalonians, there's a, a positive and faithful and good way in which this is to happen in regard to believers in Jesus as Lord and Savior. Believers in Jesus are called Christians. Christians are named after Christ. They belong to him and with him, and so Christians will imitate and be like their Lord. The Christians in Thessalonica were imitators of the apostles and of the Lord. So much so, the Thessalonian Christians then became examples to others who came to believe in Jesus also. And the message from God's word is that we too are to be faithful imitators of the apostles and of the Lord. Then in turn, we are to be faithful examples to others so that others might either be encouraged in their faith or led to believe and trust in Jesus themselves. So now comes that really, really hard question to you and me as Christians. Have you and I been the examples we should be to others? Have we imitated Christ in love and mercy and acts of love and service? St. Paul, who wrote the letter to the Thessalonians, instructs us how we should be in the rest of the letter following our text this morning. It tells us what kind of examples the Thessalonians were and what they were to continue to do to show Christ in their lives to others. I read the whole letter to the Thessalonians and discovered these particulars. Let me share what I found. This will be a listing of what I discovered in the text, which you can read and find out for yourselves as well. St. Paul encourages Christians to be like this. Be a God-pleaser, not a pleaser of men. Do not be greedy, but be content and satisfied with what God has given you. Don't use flattery. Be honest and upfront, yet do so with love and wisdom. Be gentle in your dealings with others. Be humble. Do not seek glory for yourself. I don't know about you, but in a little bit of shame, I would like to stop already. I'm feeling guilty for I have not been perfect in these things listed in this short list so far. But let us go on. Because we do need to know how we should act and what we should do as believers in Jesus for salvation. And by this we mean that these behaviors are what should flow from our faith and love in Christ Jesus. Share your faith with others. Pray continually for others. Say no in thought, word, deed, and desire to sexual immorality. Control the body. Control the tongue. Control the heart and mind. Seek to please God in all things. Help those who are weak. Be patient. Do not repay evil with evil or unkindness with unkindness. That is, do not seek revenge and do not hold grudges. The implication is that we should be ready to forgive as we have been forgiven by God in the saving work of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And do not be idle 
but work faithfully and keep busy that the devil may not tempt you to evil. You see that these are concrete examples of how we conduct ourselves in the act of faith and love. Now, back to the question I asked earlier. Have you and I been the example we should be to others? There are two ways to answer this. The first is no. When we examine and evaluate ourselves, our words, our thoughts, our actions, we can say that we, can we say that we have been perfect examples of being a fine, upstanding Christian to other Christians or to those who do not yet believe in Jesus? How do we fare? I know that for me, it might look something like this. <laughs> when we look at God's law, which demands perfect obedience and discover that we have not done as we should, that we have not been perfectly obedient in all things, we just might want to crawl into a hole and hide. God's law would tell us that we deserve eternal punishment. But there's good news. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, came into this world in order to rescue us from the wrath of God against our disobedience. Jesus came to fulfill for us the whole will and law of God. All the things that Paul wrote about in 1 Thessalonians, Jesus did them all perfectly. And Jesus then gives us the credit for it. All that we should be and do in thought and word and deed, Jesus was and did. He lived perfectly in our place and fulfilled all that we should do. Like the Thessalonian Christians, you have received the word of God and you have received the grace of God and you have received the Holy Spirit of God and you have come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing in his name, your sins are forgiven and you have eternal life. And now by the power of God's Holy Spirit working in you, God himself moves you and me to be imitations of Jesus. On earth and in our sinful flesh, we will not be perfect in our actions, but we are declared holy in saving faith in Jesus. By the ever faithful Spirit of God and His Word working in us, we are moved to be imitators of Paul and of the apostles and of Christ by faith. By the grace of God, we learn to forgive and love. God works in us that which is pleasing to him in ways that we may not even realize it. And in some ways in which maybe we can see, God is actively working in us to mold us and shape us and form us into the persons we should be. And this he does to his glory. In Christ we show forth the joy we have in the forgiveness of our sins. We show in our lives our faith in God who saves us from our sins. We show in our lives by God's power and by God's grace that we are unworthy servants who get to enter into the presence of God because he has forgiven us in Jesus, his beloved Son. God the Father calls us his beloved children. So as you trust in Jesus and continue to hear and believe his word, God will mold you into an imitator of faith and an example of that faith to others. Continue to pursue doing the labor of love that others might see in you the grace and love of God and rejoice that you have received God's grace and that you are encompassed in the love of Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us pray the prayer that Jesus has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord 
bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look on you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you for viewing Main Street Living this morning. Our hope is that you have been blessed and encouraged by this presentation. If you are able to attend local services, I would like to invite you to worship with our congregation. If you're in the Crete area, please join us at St. John Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. This broadcast is supported by viewers like you and their financial help allows this broadcast to continue. You can join us by sending a contribution of any amount to this address. More information about this program can be found at MainStreetLiving.com. Thank you again for joining us today and have a blessed week. We hope to see you again at this same time next Sunday on this station.